Ooh, what about these shoes inspires me? Um, honestly, I think one of the facts that I did do something very difficult in these shoes and got it done, bearing my dog. Climbing mountains is hard, but it's not as hard as that. The fact that I was able to do that, complete that task without giving up, because that was difficult. I can do a lot in these shoes. You know, and it's not the shoes that make the person all that good stuff. Yeah, sure. But um, they definitely help. They're also very comfortable, so I can get a lot done in these. I think that's what inspires me. Oh man, these are shoes that I got, I think, from Dickie's Sporting Goods. And I got them for the purpose of traveling out of the country and doing a lot of hiking. Yeah, when I was going to Costa Rica for the second time as an adult, which was a great time. Yeah, so they got sand and rocks and all types of chaos and bad guano. Lots of craziness happened with these shoes in a fun way. Not an expert at cleaning shoes like this though. So if you see me making mistakes, let me know. Yeah, so Costa Rica, that was, that was really fun. Going as an adult was really different from going as a kid. I went as a kid when I was maybe like 12. And then the last time I was there was four years ago. So that means I was uh, 26, maybe going on 20, 26, yeah. Cause that was 2019, yeah. And I always forget how old I am. That was right before COVID. I was there in January when COVID really was like striking up in China. Like I was getting the crazy news about like people falling in the street in China when I was in Costa Rica. And I was like, ooh, should I go back? <laughs> should I just stay in Costa Rica? Should I go back to the States? I don't know. Because we were there for like a month. And we were debating we might not have come back honestly but we did because we have responsibilities it was myself and my godfather but yeah we were like there was one time where we went surfing and then came back and just watched the news on the internet and um i remember seeing this guy just fall out yeah, and I was like, oh, this is COVID. And I was like, oh, is this Chinese propaganda or is this actually how people are dying in the streets? Yeah, but I don't know. I mean, China didn't really want it to be out like that, so information-wise, so I believed it. It looked crazy, but who knows how serious it was. It's kind of a leather suede, but I mean, they're hiking shoes that are beat up to death, so I don't think it really matters. Oh, what makes a beater pair of shoes a beater pair of shoes? Mm -hmm. Um, it also, one, it depends on your definition of a beater. My definition personally is beater shoes or shoes that will, they don't look nice all the time, but they're gonna get you where you need to go. Yeah. Like, for sure. These are definitely those reliable shoes. 
they've already proven the test of time. You know, they passed the test of time. And no matter how crazy things get in those shoes, you're not gonna, you're gonna be all right in those. The shoes might be past the point of ever getting clean for real, but whatever. Some grime is a badge of honor. What do you think? It's tear on the corner of the shoe. This, um, this is just from bending and climbing actual mountains in hiking shoes. You're really just supposed to hike in these, but I definitely climbed mountains in these. And that's from the shoe just bending over and over again all the time and running and sprinting through the woods and just doing crazy shit. Yeah, that's how that's there. I'm pretty sure I have one in the other one too. Yeah, just wear and tear. Yeah. And it's not actually a hole. There's like a piece of um, waterproof mesh that's in there. So I didn't really notice anything until I looked down. Would I say shoes take us where we need to go? Um, for sure. Yeah, I mean, you can travel barefoot, and I have done, but it's a lot harder. And I've definitely walked miles in these shoes in particular, so these have definitely taken me where I've needed to go. In many different ways, honestly. What do I mean by that? I told you before, um, before we even started, these are the shoes that I buried my dog in. And so, yeah, I guess they helped me do that in a really tough time. I literally buried my dog. I dug up the hole and all. I actually buried my dog. It was intense, but I think a good way to, uh, help the grieving process. So a lot of this dirt is clay from where she was buried. And digging through clay is not easy. But I got it done, so yeah. A little bit about my dog. Well, her name was Sprinkles. She was a toy poodle. And at the time she was, when she passed, she was 13 going on 14 yeah she was an older dog but she had a lot of illnesses because she was a toy and smaller dogs they're usually born with different problems and things like that yeah she was the best dog i know everyone says that about their dog but she was actually the best dog yeah back when i used to break the law and do what the kids call the drugs. I was probably like 15, maybe 14. And I go to my house, high out of my mind, just crazy. And I fall asleep on the couch in the living room with the weed in my hand, like, an, like a dumbass. And I wake up to the sound of my parents coming home and like, well, I'm, I'm fucked, <laughs> there we go. So I get up, they're talking to me, and I realize that the weed is gone. So I'm like, all right, that's weird. But I, you know, play it cool, talk to them, everything's fine. I'm like, okay. They're either messing with me or the weed is just walked away. <laughs> and I don't think it walked away. So I talk to them some more, everything's fine. They don't mention anything. I'm like, all right. 
have dinner, go back down to my room. So I'm like, okay, I'm not in trouble of any kind, but where is my weed though? <laughs> and so I looked down underneath my desk in my room. I fell asleep upstairs in the living room and I looked down under the desk in my room and the weed bag is right there with a little tooth mark in it. One single tooth mark. And then I hear pitter patter, pitter patter, and she just like steps in the way, like in the doorway and looks at me, and I'm like, "You're a real one. <laughs> You're a real one." And ever since then, it's been me and her. Yeah, definitely the Pikachu to my Ash Ketchum. Yeah, so it was really hard to bury her because we like went through shit together. What other things did we go through together? Uh, my mom's cancer. So my mom is still alive, but she had cancer a few times. And so Sprinkles was there for all of that. And, you know, even when I was at school and things like that, Sprinkles would stay with my mom and just sit by where her tumor was and just like, you know, put her body heat on her. And my mom said that helped her a lot. I'm gonna go ahead and switch shoes. Yeah. Yeah, my mom said that helped her a lot. So I think sprinkles for that. I don't know if my mom would have done so well with the multiple cancer she had if it wasn't for sprinkles. Because my mom had cancer two or three times. Can dogs sniff out cancer? Yeah, absolutely. Because Sprinkles always acted weird right before mom's cancer diagnosis. We actually took note of that. Yeah, dogs can definitely sniff out cancer. Hmm, what was my favorite trip with Sprinkles? Honestly, Sprinkles passed before I got a car. So I didn't really get to take too many, well, that's not entirely true. I took a few trips with Sprinkles, but nothing like really outside of the city, unfortunately. Ironically, she got out of the city once by herself and <laughs> that's a thing. So Sprinkles gets all the way out to Clarendon, Maryland by herself, by hitchhiking with random people. She walks out, gets out of the gate, because I guess the, um, <coughs> the cable person or electric person left the gate open while she was outside. That's what dogs do. That is what dogs do. Spring will say a word. Y'all really sleep? Okay. Right. Y'all sleep, I'm awake. And so she went out and walked all the way down the street towards the highway and a lady picked her up. And so one lady picked her up, left her with a friend because she was going out of town or something. Then Springles escapes from the friend's house and gets picked up by someone else. They take her to their son's house the sun lets Sprinkles out to run around in the back. Sprinkles can fit through the gate in their house, leaves their house, walks to another lady's house not too far from there, and after eight days, we find her. Yeah, and so we're talking to the first lady back and forth, pissed at her because she lost her dog, but I mean, we lost her in the first place, I guess. But she got away. She was on, on moves real bad. And so we finally found her, and that was, that happened last year, actually. So maybe Sprinkles knew it was her time, and she was going to have her little last hurrah, and she did. We have pictures of her in people's cars with, like, just smiling and having a great time. <laughs> so I'm glad that she was able to take a little trip. But yeah, I've always taken her to the woods and parks in the area. One of her favorite parks is um, Fort Reno. Yeah. What did these shoes mean to me when I first purchased them? Adventure. OK. 
because I purchased them for the purpose of going to Costa Rica and exploring stuff. So they meant adventure for me, and still do. Like when I'm when I'm wearing these shoes, I'm making moves. I'm going somewhere crazy, somewhere that needs I might have to climb a mountain. Yeah. And these are the always prepared shoes. These are the zombie apocalypse shoes. Yeah, I've crossed rivers, hiked up mountains, climbed mountains. Yeah, literally done the most in these shoes. Would I say adventure needs me or do I need adventure? That is an interesting question. Um, I'm gonna take a Taoist approach to that. Nothing is really needed, but, except nature. I need nature, and through seeking nature, I find adventure, and I enjoy that. Yeah, that's my answer for that. Oops. Am I a bit of a spiller? Oh, man, my guy, I am a torrential pourer. <laughs> for real, for real. When it comes to liquids, when it comes to information, it's, it's crazy. It's torrential rain for sure at all times. Wash the other shoe like this, but whatever. We'll live. Ooh, what about these shoes inspires me? Um, honestly, I think one of the facts that I did do something very difficult in these shoes and got it done, bearing my dog. Climbing mountains is hard, but it's not as hard as that. The fact that I was able to do that, complete that task without giving up, because that was difficult. I can do a lot in these shoes. You know, and it's not the shoes that make the person all that good stuff. Yeah, sure. But um, they definitely help. They're also very comfortable, so I can get a lot done in these. I think that's what inspires me. Oh yeah. Have I ever taken a look at the bottom of my shoes? Yeah, for sure. And they did not look like this before. These are worn out. Is that a rock? Yes, that's a rock in there, I hope. Possibly. Could be anything, honestly. Yeah, it's a rock or a seed. It's been there for a while, clearly. I'm gonna let homie live. <laughs> Take another walk in nature, maybe put it back where it belongs. Let's check the other one. Yeah, same type of damage for real. Great shoes. Have I ever looked into the chemistry behind my feet? Yes, I have actually. Um, I'm not flat footed. I have like a real arch, apparently, which is a good thing. So they say, but I'm not a foot expert, so I barely care. <laughs> but I do a lot of walking and it doesn't hurt. So that's good. I'm very thankful for my feet. I have really long toes. That's weird. Like I can grab objects and do things. I can play video games with my feet. Yeah, I know, I know. Like Tekken, fam. Yeah, I would play against myself. Yep, 
All that. All that. Yeah, it's real intense. <laughs> of course I wash my feet before I touch my controller because that's real crazy. That's not okay. This was an experiment that was done well. What does it mean to walk in my shoes? To walk in my shoes is to really crave nature and be one with it. Mm. To be in a state of positive solitude. Some people are like, we want to... I hope the world strays away from the idea of loneliness and turning it, you know, negative because you can find solitude in that and solitude is always a positive thing for me personally. I have friends, obviously. You're one of those. But I also am very thankful for the solitude I've had so that I can appreciate myself. And yes, you can do that with your friends, but it's, can you be alone with your own thoughts? And I can, and I'm thankful for that. To walk in my shoes is to live in that. Sure, I've done things that I'm not proud of, but I don't regret anything. And I think that's what's most important, to live without regret. Shout out to that man, Luffy. To walk in my shoes is to really be into anime also. But yeah, it's giving sage energy. It's giving living in a cabin in the mountains. That's definitely what it's like to really walk in my shoes, to have those as goals. Yeah, it's in this one too, on both sides. I think that's good for now. I don't know, how do we wash the insides? I could take this all out, I guess, right? I'm a little afraid. <laughs> oh man, yeah, these are bleak in here. Oh, yikes. Did you want water to soak the laces in? Do I want water to soak the laces in? You are more of an expert at washing shoes than I am, obviously. No. So, uh, nah, nah, nah. I think I'll toss the whole thing on the washing machine eventually. What does it mean to wash shoes by hand? What does it mean to wash shoes by hand? For me, it's definitely learning right now, especially for these shoes, because I know I'm this is probably not the way you should wash these shoes, but whatever. They've gone through so much, this is not going to hurt them at all. It's definitely therapeutic to run through all the memories I've actually had in these shoes, which I haven't had these shoes for a long time, since 2019. But... I've done a lot in them. I've lived a lot in these shoes. These have been my main shoe probably until I got my new place. Because I was kind of up in the air for a second. And these were the shoes that I wore the most during that time. <clears throat> what was life like before I got my new place? Um, it sucked. It sucked. Because the old place I had was just kind of crap. And, you know, capitalism and landlords trying to find a way to get you out because they want to renovate an apartment. That's never cool. Gentrification and all that. And then I moved 
with a friend of mine. Well, I moved to a place a friend of mine owned, and that wasn't great for a couple of me a couple of reasons. One, friends and finances don't mix, so that part. Uh, there was a situation where she had said, "Oh yeah, I'm not going to raise the rent." And then something happened to her in her own life where she needed more money, so she raised the rent. So, promises were broken. You know, so that friendship kind of collapsed after that because I was not going to pay more rent when that wasn't a part of the agreement. So I left. I also met someone romantically while I was living out there who was not cool, who turned out to be very sketch. So, if I had never moved out there, I would have never met that person, and that would have been great. No regrets, but things could have been avoided. Yeah. And that person is definitely to be avoided. Yeah, Some people are just toxic for their own reasons. And just mentally unhealthy. You can want to help people as much as you want, but... People got to be ready to help themselves. Mm, to help people that are... What does it mean to help people that are not in my shoes? Sharing my experiences with them. You know? If they can learn from my mistakes, I am all for that. Another reason why there's no need to regret things, because everything is a lesson. You know? I consider myself a Taoist Catholic, which is, I think, kind of interesting, maybe. But yeah, I believe in God, for sure. But I also believe that God is a lot more lax than we like to believe, in a good way. I think a lot of the things that we worry about are trivial when it comes to God. Because God, for me, is far more omnipotent than just the world. You know, it's the multiverse. You know, throughout time and space and every dimension and every, you know, timeline or what have you, God is there. And so, my problems and issues on this planet at this time, trivial in one sense, but also important in another because I also feel that we are a part of God and God is a part of us. Yeah. And that's I, that's probably the Taoist part of it. You know, because I think God just wants us to relax and do right by ourselves and everyone else. That's really it. Would I ever consider getting a fresh pair of Dr. Soul soles for my shoes? Absolutely. Because these are dying. They're dying. Yeah. These are the actual soles for my shoes, but I think some Dr. Souls soles would be dope. What even is that, isn't it? That is metal, I thought so. Okay. Oof, nasty. Hmm. What does this cup of dirty water mean? Um. That cup represents the grime mentally that I've accumulated in these shoes. I'm getting rid of that. The fun dirt's always gonna stay. Yeah. I think I'm done with this now. I will put these in the sun. Also add some sort of powder because, yeah, got to. 
Ooh. So, about my everyday pair of shoes. These are my uh, Smexy shoes. Well, they were, anyway. These were the shoes that I would go out with. Go to clubs, even though I really don't like going to clubs. You know, definitely going to like nice concerts or non-metal concerts. Those shoes I took to metal concerts. Yeah, these are the shoes I would take someone out on a date with. They were, at least, when they were super fresh. Done a lot in these shoes too. I cannot find another pair of these shoes, unfortunately. They discontinued these. Some of these shoes. It's actually sewn in. Express. And it was a store actually on um is that 14th Street? Not too far from U Street. And yeah, they had a lot of nice stuff there. I got some hats and these shoes from there. I wish I had gotten more colors because man should we change the water for these try to put this in here okay. thank you very much <laughs> slow motion takes her vibes Could you put this in slow motion, actually? What does it mean to be my everyday carry? These are the shoes that people are gonna see me in. At this point in my life, I don't really care if it's about like, oh, I need fancy shoes or whatever, whatever. These are as nice as you're gonna get shoes for me at this point in my life, just because if you're worried about my shoes and not listening to the things that I'm saying as a person, then I don't care about your opinion either. Honestly. Shoes have a story. So, you know. The marks on them mean something. And if your shoes are super clean all the time, are you really living? If you've got the time to clean your shoes all day and every day, then great for you but you know I'm, I'm living my life doing other things honestly not to say that shoe cleaning is a bad thing but shoe cleaning is definitely a luxury luxuries aren't bad things but luxuries are not necessary Is it wrong to want luxury? No, not at all. I think it's wrong to put luxury before necessity. If you have the time for luxury and the, you've earned that luxury, go for it. But if you are doing luxurious things and you're worried about how you're gonna pay rent, pay your rent first. You know, cause rent, being able to pay your rent for a lot of people is a luxury. You gotta work on enjoying the things that you have. Mental clarity is the best luxury. But that's a luxury anyone can have. The luxury to not worry about things. Yeah. Some of us aren't able to do that and that's fair and I'm really sad for those people. Of course, I don't blame them. I hope everything, you know, I hope that they get that in some way, somehow. But not everyone can. But everyone can hope. That tangent went a lot of places, I think.
I also think that luxury is a matter of opinion. Some luxuries are necessities to others and vice versa. I think every first world, the, the fact that I can say I have first world problems is a luxury. There have definitely been times where I could definitely feel in third world back in my youth, but nah, not anymore. What is the ideal day in your shoes? What is the ideal day in my shoes? And these in particular, going on a little drive to the museums, seeing something nice, a little art gallery action, go for a little walk outside, hang with some friends. Also probably doing outside activities. But nothing crazy in the sense of climbing. These are not those shoes. Yeah, these are city shoes. Yeah, that's my ideal day with these. Keeping it chill. Nice little drive. See some cool stuff with a nice floor. <laughs> Have I ever thought about life in someone else's shoes? Yeah, lots of people. Most people I meet, I wonder what it's like to, you know, be them for a second. You know, how else do we really relate to people than to contemplate their own lives? And how we would behave in their life. How else can you really say oh, I understand or don't understand something if you've, you know, one, had or hadn't the thing happen, two, contemplated how you and how the other person would react in the situation. That might be a little convoluted. Wonder what type of seed that is. Hmm. <laughs> I think we all know what type of seed that is. We don't need to comment on it. What do the color of these shoes mean to me? I like green. Green is cool. I don't know if everyone can see that they're green, but they were green. <laughs> Like a light gray green. And army green is also cool. Not that I'm pro army, because no. I have love for everyone that is in the army. Do I agree with the ideology of such? Not at all. Do I think the American army is a tool for capitalism? Absolutely. Do I think that a lot of the things that the army has done can be justified? No. But everyone in the army is a person, has a family. So they deserve love.
I have a lot of friends and family who are veterans who talked about um, a lot who were actually in Vietnam and ran into situations where they had to kill or remove youths from there from this plane of existence which is very traumatic when you're in a situation where a person has a bomb strapped to their body through their choice or otherwise a lot of times not it's really hard to figure out what you need to do a lot of times the best scenario is to just put that person out of their misery from a distance which is very sad but yeah that's war sucks all right next shoe do you ever think about ever think about what life has done to veterans and things of that nature i know what it's done i have lots of friends who are veterans who are some are more put together than others but everyone is different now than they used to be yeah there are people who really accepted that lifestyle and became mercenaries who were able to do things that were actually justified and actually defending people from large nations that had ill intent so that's good and then there are people who really weren't able to integrate back into society who are still good people but no but they're good people a lot of bad has happened to them and it's hard for them not to react in a certain way when similar things like that are happening. Yeah. I have a story of the guy who used to take care of me was a veteran. He was a sniper killer and a paratrooper in the Green Beret. And when I was really, really little, when I was an, a baby, I walked into his apartment, well, crawled, because he would always leave his apartment open. And open and lights off at all times, even at night. So I walked in there, and of course my mom is flipping like crazy. She doesn't know what's going on. Of course the story was told to me, I was too young to remember. And she hears me laughing. She goes up to the hallway and she hears me laughing. And dude is just hanging out with me in his apartment and we're just like having a blast. And she talks to him. She's cool and calm because she actually works worked with veterans at the time. So she knew who that dude was a veteran and all that. She just never really talked to him. But you know, starts talking to him, everything's cool. And me coming into his apartment really made his day. A lot of people really didn't trust him with children because of the military, which is a terrible misconception. Just because someone was in the military and has post-traumatic stress disorder doesn't mean they're gonna be bad with children. A lot of times children, animals, you know, things to take care of really help people. And I helped him in that way, apparently. And for a long time, that was my babysitter. Since, like, I remember he's some of the first memories I have as a person is hanging out with him. And he would take me to the zoo and taught me about different herbs and things like that. And I remember getting on the bus with him after we had picked sugarcane from the zoo because sugarcane used to grow at the zoo in D.C. A lot of people don't know that. I don't know if it still does, but it definitely did. And eating sugarcane for the first time, and it was amazing. Yeah. A 
later on in life, um, people were in the apartment where I used to live and some young dudes, you know, doing what they should not be doing. Not saying that they were bad people or anything like that, but they were just, you know, loud, foolish kids. Teenagers, but kids. They go in his apartment. I don't know if they were teenagers. No, they were adults. Sorry, they were actual grown men. Older. Not middle-aged, but like... Older. Maybe my age now. So they go in there. My mom told me the story. They go in there, she hears screaming. Of course she didn't see them go in there, but she heard screaming in the hallway. Looks out, it's coming from dude's apartment. Apparently they had gone in there. Out of curiosity, you just go in someone's apartment. I, that's not smart. But dude always had his apartment open, right? But his walls and everything were also painted very dark. So at nighttime, you couldn't see anything. He was very used to this because of the military. You know, he was always in darkness. So his eyes were good. So I guess when they walked in, they wanted to try and take stuff, but they didn't see him. So screaming ensues. The next day, military police come and take him somewhere, relocate him. I never knew where he went. I hope to find him eventually. I know someone who knows him, so I need to really dig deep into that. The person who knows him also a veteran. Similar skill set, similar background. Yeah, it would be nice to find him. Hopefully that happens. Would I say that life has been kind to me in these shoes? Um, yes. Life is kind, period. The world around us is not always determined by nature. We are a very powerful species and the fact that we can upset nature and each other, people are not always kind. Life itself is kind, because it's a gift, you're alive. So, has life been kind to me in these shoes? For sure. I don't remember too many bad times in these shoes. You know, and I'm sure I've had them, but they weren't worth remembering. Because they weren't that bad. Ooh, what's next for me in these shoes? Finding another pair. I know they're out there somewhere. Somebody's got a black pair. And yeah, I'm gonna get those. And then get my little set together. But I will continue to live life in these shoes and do things that make me happy in them. Am I right now damaging them with water? Who's to say? Everything will be fine. They definitely needed to be clean though. Do the shoes make the man or do the man make the shoes? The man makes the shoes. Absolutely. 
Because anyone else who wore these shoes would have had a totally different experience in them. All the stories in both of these shoes are my stories. Yeah. A shitty wizard blames his tools. A very wise man once told me that. What is the most important piece of advice I've gotten in my travels? Breathe. Don't forget to breathe. Above all things. Take a second, take a breath. That's helped me in fights, in making decisions. Don't forget to breathe. Yeah. Shout out to Travel Train Keach on that one. The martial arts school that I go to. Have I ever had to run away from someone in these shoes? I only run from the police, man. And I haven't run from the police in these yet. Definitely in those, not in these. Absolutely. Nothing is forever. Not you, not me, not these shoes, not the planet. The only thing that we may believe is forever is the space in between. Maybe. <laughs> yeah, so letting go is a necessity. You can't grasp anything forever. There is no forever except for the idea of forever. And even those won't last. You need human beings to have ideas or consciousness to have ideas. The only lasting consciousness is God, however you see him, her, or them. Yeah. What do I look for in my ideal pair of shoes? Comfortability. If they don't feel good, I don't want to, like, no. That's, they can look immaculate, have gold on them. If they don't feel good, I'm selling the gold. No. I can't, if I can't walk in them, why are they shoes? You know? I don't think this dirt's coming off. Reflecting while cleaning my shoes has been helpful? Absolutely. There are a lot of things that I haven't thought about in a while that I think is good to get off my chest. Talking is always good, especially talking with friends. So, yeah, it's been very helpful. Especially when it comes to like processing sprinkles and things like that. Yeah, I appreciate you giving me the space to do this. This is a day in my shoes.